I'll set Mr. Chen. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'll Sorry, call the meeting to order. The what? You can take the and I would ask if anyone's recording, would they make it known? Chevy. Yeah, perfect. One he had last year. Thank you. Uh, let's start off with uh, an introduction. Uh, our associate member, Emmanuel Daskalakis, has been promoted, <laughs> if that's the right word, to a full member. And we have a new associate member on my right, uh, Mark Bianco. And I'd like to thank Bob Reed for his time on the board, his dedication, and his professionalism, and wish him well. And with that, the first uh, item of business is the minutes of June 12th, if you've had a chance to review. While we're doing that, I would uh, just make a note that if anyone's here for Bay Point this evening, they've asked for another continuance. Any, any extensions needed with them? Keep asking for these. Are, are we getting extensions for these dates that they had put into their, into their, uh, their paperwork? Yeah, the um, the latest one moves the deadline for decision to August 14th. I think we should make a motion to deny it for lack of participation. Um, this evening's continuance is based on the inability of the mediator to attend. I make a motion to accept the minutes of June 12, 2017. It's written. Second that. Uh, I just have a couple corrections. Uh, on page uh, new business. I stated Mr. Reed and Mr. Baptiste's appointments were coming to an end. So they both issued letters of intent, not just Bob, it was uh, Mike also. And just above that, a scratch decision deadline on the June 26th hearing. Sticky note. There we go. And amend my motion to accept them as adjusted. I'll second those adjustments. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Let's see who is here. <laughs> Next item is an a and of Bob Perry, Zero Square Island Road. Just 
looking for a couple of notations. Charlie, give us some language he wants in there to the notice. If, uh, not even, I just saw the plan for the first time just now. Ken dealt directly with them and they sent him the plans and nobody sent me a copy, so. I got a call Thursday from the board asked me to file a new application, which I did this afternoon. So I think, you know, Charlie just said he's satisfied with the plan that I want to meet for him. Under the notes number seven at the top yeah, left is the addition. I remember the last meeting as Charlie said, if you make that change, you can sign it. Once again, I don't want to speak for poor Charlie. Though. Any questions, concerns? Entertain a motion to no. endorse? Yes. Second. I have a motion, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, For purposes of this meeting, Mr. Kalakas is still an associate member until July 1, and Mark is not a voting member until July 1st, when their terms begin. Is that a solar field you're putting down there? Is that what's, is that what's going on? I'm sorry. A solar oh, it's all, it's all done. It's in. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is the, I don't care if you guys approve the plan or not. They keep paying me. There's the two paper ones. Yeah. So it's already done. Good. I have it down there. He is. About half of the man I guess. About half of here. They put in a big solar field. The utilities already run down? You had the right power feed in there? It's not hooked up up here at the end of the road, but everything all here is all done. Okay. All has run out this way up the road. Not to do it. Supported. Next, we have a A and R from Michael Fernandes to Aunt Maryville Way. Okay. <laughs> My name is Frank Westgate. Most of you know me. I did the survey and most of the plan work. This is Michael Fernandez, the applicant, and this is Corinne, his mom. Okay. And this is a simple land swap, and we, at least we tried to keep it simple. So um, it's pretty straightforward as far as I'm concerned, and if you have any questions, be glad to answer them. Have you seen this before? The property that you see with the heavy lines is the existing property with that neck frontage, with the paper frontage. That's the existing land right now, and that's in, in the, on record at the registry and, and on your assessor maps. What we're doing, we're taking 
we're, we're going to convey that, Michael's gonna convey that to his mom who owns lot 1028 where that house is together with the pool and uh, make it one continu contiguous L-shaped lot in the front. That'll go to his mom, Corinne. And then Michael's lot will continue to use that existing paved drive that's been there for a long, long time for their, for their access. The legal frontage will be out on uh, Aunt Maryville Way over to the east. We've got at least 150, front of, 150 foot of frontage there. So. Uh, if the question comes up as to whether or not Aunt Maryville Way is suitable, there are how many houses on that Six. road, Michael? Six. Six? I know back in the uh, late 40s, uh, there were at least four houses on that road. I used to deliver ice in the summertime. The old dance hall is right here. There was an old dance hall right there in the corner. I used to live across the street. Explain it one more time, Michael. The driveway's coming around the back? Yes. There's a driveway. We use, I mean, there's a access easement right there, but also around, like, where my dwelling is, there's a, there's a fence there, but there's an opening, and that's where, you know, the main the driveway, you can use that to access Aunt Maryville Lane. Yeah. So all the abutters are cooperating? Oh, yeah. No issues? Yeah. Uh, could you explain the the uh, connection of Maryville Way to Lot A? Is it going through another property first, or how, how well, does that work? At Maryville Way, it's not a town layout. It's simply a right of way because it's been there forever. So there are no definite lines to it other than the the, the perimeter of the of the roadway itself. That's all we have. But there are various plans of record that show that. So we, it's been there a long, long, long time. Like I said, back in the late 40s, it was there then. If I didn't bring those other plans that showed that, I don't think. But that, where it's marked access easement, where that paved drive is, how long have they been using that, Michael, for access? Since 2001. Okay, so 15 years they've been using it and they'll continue the, to use the it. The original frontage was on 28? No. No. Aunt Maryville. Aunt Maryville. That's what I thought. Always, never, no. never was. We just, we just ha ended up making a driveway through there because it was my mother's property. Yep. He didn't want to use the dirt road. <laughs> to be honest, so. In regards to the dirt road, also on that plan, we have a fence that's in front of the dirt road so you know our property doesn't go i mean our property technically goes on outside of the road but it's you know we lose some property on this side of yes yeah. so okay. it doesn't hinder anyone you know the other houses using the road the original building permit and you'll probably Same never use that here. road right yeah now. this road is actually going through his property right now yeah. right no could he ever cut off access? Well, so he just said he's got a fence no, on the no, inside. He wasn't on the board when, when that building came from. So he has surrendered this piece of property. <coughs> Ask him. Yeah, I remember something. Legitimate question. Yeah. Mm. This Mike, first road is probably the, been there in 100 years. The fence is on the interior the, line of the yeah, road, it's right? It's dead ends down the end. So like you're permitting right, access just to the business. roadway to the neighbors? Yeah. Yes. I guess if you stop talking to your neighbors, could you cut off their access to the road? No. No. So this, this roadway, this trailway, yeah. like I said, it's been there for Is maintained by the town? Uh, Richard used to live town plows it? Yeah, they, made, they maintained, maintained it for years, time. yes. That road's probably been there for 100 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a million times I've never even seen that road. Yeah. Comments, uh, concerns? Entertain a motion to endorse? Second. Sure. <laughs> 
Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. That's great. Appreciate that. Would you be signing it right now, or should we wait? Yeah, no, it's signed. Sign. No, we'll, we'll get you a copy right now. We okay. You can take it for endorsement. We miss a note on there. Yeah, they, they don't want to come back and see us. No, <laughs> Why? That gets recorded. If the property ever transfers, yeah. the new owner say, "Put on yeah. access to the yeah, and you'd have a hell of a lawsuit because they've been using it no. since the thirties. What you do with this copy too? When you get ready to do same name. No, no. Once a, once a week, I get asked that question. I grew up out in the Berkshires. Oh, did you? Yeah. Praise. Okay. Maybe I can claim him as an uncle. Leave me something in the will up there. Yeah. yeah he's got the first nickel he ever made. That guy. <laughs> Next, we have an A and R for uh, Heidi Dobbins Morse, 2718 Cranberry Highway. The guy with the pink shirt, sons of police investigators. What? One a night, Bill. One a night. This is what's it. No. I'm just kidding. Are you Heidi this evening? <laughs> Are you Heidi this evening? I'm Heidi this evening. Jeff Harper, actually. We want to see Heidi. to do here is she actually owns the entire parcel that's shown in the, the heavy the heavy dark line um, we show it as lot C dash 1a and, and lot C dash 1b together they they total about 2.62 acres what she wants to do is divide her house off that's on the uh, that fronts on cranberry highway right now and create a, uh, a back lot <coughs> which has frontage on S spring Ave. Now, on Spring Ave, Spring Ave isn't constructed all the way through. Correct. Am I correct? Is there enough frontage on uh, what's there to get you 150 foot? I think there's enough frontage to gain access to the, to the lot. I, I don't believe it's quite 150 feet in length, but it does provide access to, uh, to lot C-1B. We were actually going to, I think, look at breaking this up into take lot C 1B and create two, two lots from it. But since Spring Ave did not extend far enough um, up the town, up the layout, we thought it would be more appropriate just to create the, the, the one lot um, at su such time that Spring Ave was extended or continued, then. Now, I think she could come forward. Now, Fall, a, Fall Ave was never constructed for Fall Street. Fall Street is not constructed, correct. Right. I mean, what is 
install and location and there that we need. This also yes. is pending CF. Uh, there's one, two, three, four houses in Perry's ice cream. Got a lot for that. Any Perry questions? Yeah. Things right here. Okay. Are there public utilities going down Spring Ave? Spring Ave stops right here. Um, I don't believe they continue all the way down Spring Ave. They need to be extended for the, if there were to be a house constructed on that lot. That's right here, it's just in the back. Okay. Spring Ave ends right here. Yeah. This is forever that goes in this house. Is there a house there? There's a house here. There's nothing here. This is unconstructed. Okay. None of this exists. That's all woods. We talk about 180 feet of frontage. Does it have to be accessible well. through a public way? Uh, That's what he's saying. No, not really. It's 150 Bill, feet. Is your applicant going to clean up at the end of spring out? Ends to the road. He says he's got enough access to you showing the pavement? Is your yeah. applicant going to clean up that area so that they qualify for 100 feet of, 150 feet of frontage? I hadn't discussed that with them. I'm not 100% not sure on it. On that, I thought that the building commissioner would, <coughs> as long as there was access to to the lot. But as far as cleaning up uh, debris, is that what it is? I, yeah, I've never been down there, so I'm not quite sure what happens at the end of the pavement. So yeah, because Spring Ave, you got it depicted on the on the print right about where it ends. All it is is a driveway, basically, to get into the house, uh, lot two fifteen. No, it stops right here. But it's paved through there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, so the road's paved like this, basically, see? and all it is sure. is stuff for a driveway. It the goes in there. Doesn't it come down from another? Isn't it? Yeah, no. so it, Fall Street just south. Dirt. These were supposed to connect. It must have come down yeah, Spruce Street. Street yeah. No. So I remember coming out that way. If you go Spruce Street, you go up here, and Brother Kenny's lives. Once you go up, seeing all those, the next street over. Is this all? Yeah, it is, yeah. And so is this uh, Spruce Street, yeah, Spring yeah. Street, yeah. yes, yeah. And they're sort of adequate kind of width widths and... Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's all. That's it's all. it's so a public way, so yeah, with the public way, approval is not required. Problems. There's enough room there to put... And in fact, you go back 500 feet, so it's years. all commercial in the front, even though there's residential here, you because there was a guy that had a garage here. I gave him a hard time, but they couldn't stop him because he was in the commercial district. There'd be no reason to build it out now. <laughs> right behind exactly. it, of course, back here is all residential. Okay. So these just these houses are the right to I'd like, you know, personally, I would like to see that street extended. A little further back than just just the driveway because like I said there's one driveway there now uh, basically you're gonna have two accesses off of one driveway even though it's a road layout and you know, there's nothing there what what driveway are you talking about it's from right here to go in this house in 215 that's the only thing that goes up there the, that road is all woods you see, there's no access to the back there? have you been up there no I haven't oh. no. no what I saw was there was a public way and in accordance with the regulations, approval is not required when it's public way. Although we can ask if the if the homeowner will improve the way. Well, I think just for safety's sake, uh, is to have something in there because I believe that's all sand, sand and trees. Well, yeah. If he, if he was going to split it again, I'd say definitely you'd have to clean it up, but just to access one lot. Plenty of, plenty of room along the paved way for a driveway. Uh, can I ask a question, F fellas, uh, on that? So the lot that he wants to form now, C-1B, from the, the, you know, the rebar with the cap set there is his corner. <clears throat> he's got to have 150 feet. Are you saying that he's got to make sure that he's just got that 150 feet of road improved? Yeah. Or further? 150 feet, say, you know, say adequate or legal frontage for that lot. Okay, so my concern, my, it's a question and a concern is they come back in here later and they want to split C-1B into two, let's say, 
then I think that that road needs to be taken down well, then, then 150 if, feet beyond that lot line. If, if, if that happened, that's going to become a problem because that's a dead end street, basically. Okay. Uh, what, what, we're, what we're looking at right now from Spruce Street to put a 150 foot stub on there, you're just going 150 foot to a dead end road, no cul de sac, no nothing, just to gain frontage. The rest of it's a paper street that's never been constructed. Because if you go, Fall Street doesn't exist. Fall Street's a paper street. Right. Does it, does it exist on the other side? No. This satellite is showing it in paved. Yeah. Fall Street? I think it just doesn't come over and tie into this. But. Well, the street here, I know Spring Street doesn't go well. So there's Spruce. Yeah. Fall is. Fall's a dead end street. That's where Facino's lives. Okay. Son lives in the second house, father lives in the first house on the corner of. I see Charlie over there. Hmm. Because if that street went all the way through, it would go out to Summer Street in the back. <clears throat> so my my concern, Bill, is, is, is a simple one, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, to the applicant. <clears throat> so from the corner of the lot line that you're building, my, my two cents is that we have at least 150 feet of, of road, of, of what the pavement is. Now, I don't know what it is right now. Whatever it is, all I'd ask is that, that it be developed to the 150 foot mark. Instead of saying, oh yeah, we have 100 foot of frontage, 150 feet of frontage on a paper road, I'd like to see at least 150 feet be, be right. Then if they come back and they want to do it, my concern would be that they, they go 150 feet beyond that lot line where, where it's a paper road. That, and I think that we, we, we concur with the second half of what your suggestion is. I mean, we, we believe that the, the paved portion of Spring Apps provides suitable access for a single lot. And that's precisely the reason why we did not divide C, uh, 1B into two additional lots is because the applicant didn't want to go to the expense of having having paved it. And we think that uh, typically the town has has granted building permits provided the, provided you had, um, you know, vital access to the lot. You did not necessarily have to have um, the frontage constructed throughout the entire frontage of the lot. So we felt that uh, in keeping with past practice that the uh, Spring Street in its current state would provide them that the access, suitable access to, to get a to, driveway. All right. to, to get a driveway in. And if we were to look at 1B into another lot, then we certainly <laughs> have to extend that portion of Spring Ave. Bill, it looks like there's about 100 feet of pavement past the lot line. Yeah. Whatever it scales, I uh, neglect to bring the scale. That, it, is that, yeah, no, that, that's fine. That's, that's fine. the way it is. To four <coughs> lots. That's just my opinion. It, it gets them in. I was just kind of yeah. listening to Mike's concerns that that the driveway to C 1B may wind up being right, bless you, may be right across from Spruce Street yeah. um, in a driveway that's possibly there. Yeah, I, I said at the end of the I buy it, Bill. That's fine. The that's people fine. go to the house on the left. I, I think 100 feet of pavement and should be enough past that at the end of that I have never been down there but be past the pavement be cleared a little bit so that it doesn't just stop at the pavement and whatever. But I'm fine with it the way it's proposed yeah I can live with it I get a motion I make a motion to accept the plans endorse endorse the plan for Heidi Dobbins Morris 270 Cranberry Highway Lot C 1B as proposed off of Spring Avenue. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This paper one is the mylar underneath. It's supposed to be there's a road right here. Bill, mm -hmm. so, I got a question for you. Let's just say after the fact. John, Cranberry Highway. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. Spring Street. Didn't wasn't there a paper street that was supposed to be constructed along between Cranberry Highway and the front of Jedham houses? 
Get away. Keep right here. Right here. Across Spring Street. It was originally in the original layout, this layout. That plan there was a road in front of it. From Donald Rogers' house. Oh yeah, there was a it was wider there. there. Yeah. I don't know if that was is that a large? relocation of the highway or was that no, uh, that was part of the original subdivision I, mean, I can't think of a you can actually see it by um, I think right. it, may, it may have disappeared. There was a tree line there and another. Right, right. I can't remember the name of the development, but I know we uh, been in there several times over the years. This, 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 this paper street here, casino, the son lives here, mm -hmm. and father lives here. This road here, this was supposed to go up to Summer Street, goes into the woods, and somewhere's up in here, and where was the playground? Mm -hmm. And then the power lines are really further cool up. But this road was never constructed all the way through. This way it shows it just goes into the woods and it dies. Next, we have the continued public hearing, site plan review, and definitive subdivision for Fort Fairfield. Actually, Date on those ones. These are dated the 22nd of June. Okay. So the, the last submission, I believe, was July 12th. Correct. June 12th. In July? June, June 12th. <laughs> April 10th. <laughs> Last year, Bill. So Thank now he's going to give you the last year. So Charlie looked at these. He had comments, so they got together. Okay. These should show up. Everything good, Charlie? Half size, so confused things here. Everyone, it'd be good if I could have Thank you, Captain. Take it to the other way. Yeah, I give Charlie's as long as he has it. We can open them. Yeah, you can. Make sure you get it. So, if you'd like to just recap what the uh, yeah, remaining changes were, I think that would. Changes. Let's see. They uh, they were reflected on Charlie's. I think uh, I think his last letter of June 21st was the uh, was the final letter that we that we looked at. Um, and number one was the half circle at the end of the parking lot where we squared that off and and made it paved. Uh, well, show it show it to be paved. I believe at the last meeting we had not indicated that to be paved it indicated as to be a gravel area 
So we revise that on the final plan set to show it to be paved. Um, item number two, there was a comment on monument street monuments this is more relative to the definitive subdivision plans um, we indicated on the definitive subdivision plan the nails to be set and monuments to be set um, on that plan um, there's a radius at the navionics driveway um, the way we had it i believe we had it with a 15 uh, a 10 foot radius on it it uh, created a situation where we had essentially a compound curve there, and Charlie asked that we would change it to 15, which we did do on those on the final plans. Uh, we had a discussion relative to the, a swale on the, I guess it would be the westerly side of the site. Um, whether a guardrail needed to be installed there or whether we could just finesse the grade a little bit when we're actually constructing it, keep that um, area as flat as possible without having a, having a depression, or, uh, actually a swale that someone could drive off onto. And we felt that uh, we just added notation on the plan that we would, we would um, fill it to the maximum practical degree and, and uh, adjust that in the field for the most part. The sewer manhole to be installed by the, uh, the sewer department. That was a repair that was, uh, I talked to Guy Campina last week. That repair has taken place. He did already engage the contractor to do that work. So they reconstructed a manhole that we will tie into and he did leave a stub for, for us uh, and it's noted on the plans. Um, the fire access roads on that were shown for the building pad site. Um, we talked about changing some of the the crown of the road. We, we showed a slope from one side to the other. And I think that what we, uh, what the suggestion was is that we would, we would construct it as shown on the plan. And if we, if it doesn't hold up the way it was intended to, to hold up, that we would, uh, we would look in, we would look into it in phase two and pave it, perhaps pave it as part of phase two when they actually construct that building. There was a small um, island in the, in the parking lot for the main building that we showed a paved waterway, so to speak, discharging into it. We just relocated that um, further upgraded <coughs> to uh, facilitate more drainage from entering into that. Uh, that was changed on the final plan. Um, the use of Navionics property on the no Northwest, we needed to confirm that as commercial so the landscape buffer could be retained as, a t as 10 feet. I looked at the assessor's card on that. The assessor's card has it noted as industrial on the use, but when you further look at the assessor's card and you break it down as to what the actual uses are within the building, um, I believe that uh, they, were, they were indicating that about 4,000 square feet of the 6,000 on the first floor was office as opposed to manufacturing or warehouse or something like that. So I think, uh, you know, I'm not certain how the assessor's department creates that card. Perhaps it was manufacturing at one point in time, but it appears that it's more office use at this, at this point. They do do some packaging there and they do send out product, but there's no assembly um, or manufacturing in the building. So that's what I uncovered with respect to, to that comment. So, so on that note, Bill, let me just ask a question. So along that property in front of that, that existing building, um, your landscape or your construction is not going to affect them in any way, uh, disrupting their drainage or, or no, in, sort. In, in fact, their, it's not going to disrupt their drainage. I think we manage the drainage that comes off their site. The drainage comes from the northwest across our site currently, and right now I believe um, the way we have it designed, it kind of goes through through our drainage basin and is directed um, more to the east. Okay. All right. There was a detail to show some curbing around the bioretention area. Um, it was. 
we, we modified the detail to show that the, that the curbing would be set in concrete on both sides. Uh, the original note said that we would put a cubic yard at the joints um, of each section of precast concrete curb, but now it's continuously set in concrete to uh, provide su proper support on each side. On item number 10 with the drainage calculations, what we did is we provided a weighted um, calculations on total suspended solids removal for the site. Um, and what we did do is show that the total TSS removal from stormwater management would be 81%. It's, eight, it's required to be 80% by DEP stormwater management standards. We had, we, we had one drainage basin that was say achieving 89% with one drainage basin that was achieving a little less. Um, but when you average them both together, they would come out to 81. And in fact, you know, we do have some other pretreatment devices in there. We have a, a, a little P-stone diaphragm and we also have a grass filter strip prior to discharging into the sediment floor bay, which, um, you know, we don't get the, the type of credit that you really should get for that type of pretreatment, but in any event, we uh, did achieve the 80% minimum TSS removal for the stormwater for the site as a whole. Um, the other comment relative to roof runoff for the building, we, we had some roof runoff in infiltration chambers um, at the rear of the building. There was an issue with uh, the elevation of the groundwater table. It could have been a couple of tents we were a couple of tents closer than maybe what we should have, so we relocated it um, on the site as, as suggested and the, the revised plans reflect that change. Um, condition of approval to show the fire flow test prior to submitting the building permit application. That would need to be done for the fire protection system anyway. The uh, the designer of that system will have to do a fire flow test and determine what the pressures are so we can design this sprinkler system properly. So that was included. Um, I did request from Guy Campina a letter that stated that the sanitary system, the municipal system could support the additional 1,400 gallons a day that's proposed from the, from the two new buildings. I don't know, I didn't see that letter come across my desk, but we did talk about it late last week, and he said that he would provide it. Um, he did indicate verbally to me that there was no issue with that, that, that flow. It's a relatively small amount of flow at 1,400 gallons a day. And uh, the final thing was a discussion on the, the roof of the building. And I think that uh, this is probably something that would be more of a condition of approval or something that the, uh, the board would like to, to uh, frame appropriately that uh, if they were to modify the roof of the building that that could be perhaps done as a, as a minor change yeah, without the need to come back before the, before the board. And I think that the, uh, the caveat to that would be that we're talking about a, modest change to the roof. We're not simply deciding to make it a flat roof from a, from a pitched roof, but some rendition of what is there, but somewhat somewhat modified in the event it happens. So those were the, uh, the final 14 items on the, uh, on, the, on the site plan review that Charlie provided that we, we addressed in the, uh, the last plan submission. And I think that's about it. They got them all, Charlie. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I went through the plans again, and um, everything that we discussed has either been changed or agreed to with respect to what was written out. So uh, I'm satisfied with the mindset. Didn't you request some additional lighting at the entrance from the cul-de-sac to the property or something? I don't that was, yeah, that was a comment uh, that I made in the previous letter. Was that addressed? Was that uh, I think you probably forgot it, Mike. Um, at this point, it could be uh, made as a condition that an additional light be placed there. I think you it should be. You have no problem there. with that, right? Pardon me? You have no problem with an additional light towards the front of the entry of the property? 
I don't think we have a problem with that. If, that, if that's what it takes to get this done tonight. <laughs> where does, uh, where would it go? We have a few weeks to think about it. No. Near the sign location. Oh, okay, yeah, that yeah, island. So it there. helps to um, light and eliminate the main access that comes into the building. Sure. Um, I thought you and Bill had spoken about it, though, when you guys did the uh, We spoke about it at the public hearing, but I don't think we addressed it when we got together. Okay. <coughs> I mean, we did do, we, we did take the, um, the photometrics from the, the okay. lighting manufacturer. We did impose the, the foot candle distribution on the plan, and I think we were like a half a foot candle thereabouts at the, uh, at the outer edges of the, of the parking lot, and I think that two tenths or one tenth is what is customary. Um, desired there. One of the things we want to be sure of is that we had no spillover onto adjacent properties. So uh, we thought that that was our. That's what we. That's what we did first and foremost. Ensured that we did not have that occurrence. So, but we're able to add a modest light. We've reviewed and discussed that this ourselves. Wanted, and right. Mr. Riley had brought it up. I didn't see it addressed, so I remember the conversation. Anything else from the board? I got <clears throat> you, you was talking possibly uh, there might be solar panels on this roof? Yes. Okay. Is there the direction of the solar panels and the angle of that building? There's an off ramp fairly close. Is there going to be any reflection off the solar panels to the road? If, if there were a, a reflection issue, there are panels that come in, in dark glass that can re, are anti-glare, and we would not want any any liability associated with that. Typically, they're they're used around airports and uh, other sensitive areas. But uh, if there's any issue, we're, we're already the board's brought up an, a question about roof lines previously and we got into a discussion we don't normally expect to with, with planning boards and we're trying to be sensitive to your thoughts on, on the matter so as we contemplated what we might do about the roof when we originally started we were at a flat roof. Right because that, that roof has quite a pitch on it the reason I asked that a lot of times you'll get that, that solar reflection even if it's for 15 or 20 minutes a yes. critical time of traffic time that could be you know, a dangerous situation. Understood. Yeah, uh, there, some of the racking systems, the mounting hardware for the panels now uh, have uh, movable axes, and they will they will tilt slightly to follow the sun. Uh, I'm not sure how that would occur, but we're we're working with solid pros that work on a national basis uh, for government projects. So I, I think we're in in very good hands. Uh, we certainly don't want to accept any liability for something like that, focusing glare on highways, just asking for trouble. We're trying to avoid all those problems. So, uh, it's been a long road to avoiding things, too. Uh, is there anyone here this evening that wishes to comment on this project? The bog owner satisfied with the drainage plan? Is the bog owner satisfied with the drainage plan that's not going to intrude the agriculture? Um, yes, they are. I've worked with um, George Rogers. He's the he's a consultant to ADM. He was prior prior to him being a consultant for the company. He was the manager of Cranberry Operations at one point in time. So we did discuss that, and um, we created a plunge pool at the outlet side of our our northerly most drainage basin to uh, try to convert any of any of our flow into sheet flow over over the bog and uh, we're working with them now on an, on finalizing the easement for cranberry operations and uh, Fort Fairfield so we're, Fort Fairfield is going to be granting them an, an easement to conduct cranberry operations on a portion of their property um, so yeah, we're working, working in the right, in the right vein for that. Uh, everybody have things in their packet? You all have draft decisions. Draft, uh, just, do you have a draft decision in your packet? <clears throat> Review.
vote on this in the Bob's absence. Site plan. He was here for that, right? I don't think he was here for the initials, right? Probably not. Did you draw this up, Ken? Yes, I did. Um, <laughs> was there, uh, we spoke earlier about um, the definitive being conditioned upon the site plan and vice versa? Right, and that's what I've done in this. A couple of things that have to be changed is the, um, is the date on the plan. So it can be as revised as of the latest. 20 seconds, is it? Oh, sorry. Yeah, June 22nd. months can okay. didn't seem like it would take that long to do this <laughs> yeah, so are the definitive plans also dated June 22nd, or are they? They're, re they're revised through June 22nd, yes. Okay. So the planning board has two votes on this. One is on the definitive plan and one is on the special permit for site plan review. The conditions on the site plan review are standard conditions as well as the, the items in Mr. Rowley's letter, latest letter. If you want to add a condition about the lighting, that would be appropriate as well. Mr. Rowley, did they address the concern you had about the drop off? Of yeah, what, <coughs> what we decided we to do, would, to leave the detail that was shown on the plan, we'll leave it on the plan. And at the time that the road gets constructed, we'll take a look at it. And if it just makes sense to just level it off into that slope, that's what would be done. But we'll, we'll make it as a field change. And, and confirm that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that is uh, condition number 13 on the site plan review special permit. If the shoulder is the guardrail will, will be installed if the gutter line is two deep, feet deep or more. And other changes in the grade to eliminate the use of the stonework may be left as a possible field change. Condition number two on the site plan review special permit was something that was added at the request of AD Make Peace, which is there's both a confirmatory easement from the town to Navionics, and that there's an easement from a Navionics to AD Make Peace that's executed, delivered, and recorded.
this is this is typical of easements uh, when you have changes in the uh, in the properties in the parceling of, of lots and the ownership that you would want to have a confirmatory ease, easement to I continue. Mean, I, I it's typical, but I represent the landowner, and I have agreed to that. Okay. You have? So, yes, I have. So that's not a problem, uh, unless it's a problem for any of you guys. But from my point of view as attorney for the landowner, it's fine. We spent a good part of the day on that, and that's the line that we're just, we're satisfied. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. The other thing you'll have to do is find for the waivers of the subdivision mm -hmm. that, that you grant. So if there's nothing further, I'd look to motion to close the public hearing. So moved. I'm not, by that I mean <laughs> both public hearings. <laughs> Is it two or three? Okay, two. Uh, I'll make a motion we close both public hearings. For the site plan and for, and site for the Site plan and, and the definitive. Is the motion? Is there a second? Second. Thank you. And then I would ask for an action. Let's go with the definitive subdivision first. Are you going to vote on the motion to close? Oh, didn't. Site plan review. So you said I'm nodding. I didn't even bring it up. All those in favor of closing the public hearings? Aye. 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 Thank you, Ken. <laughs> All right. Any omissions from the draft or additions you want to get to make to it? No. So Ken, the waivers on, on this uh, one through eight, that's everything that the applicant had asked for? That's correct. The clarification on number eight, the monuments, is that they would be standard at three points and PK nails at the other three points within the parking area. Parking area. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion uh, on the findings, condition, and waivers um, that we uh, approve the application as submitted and revised, dated June 22nd, plans. I think you should clarify a subdivision or site plan review special permit in the motion. You did say definitive, I, didn't you? Um, def or did you? You said well, definitive. I, I'm sorry. I maybe I did. Findings, condition, and waivers for form C-1 certificate approval of a definitive plan modification. That's that's the that's the set of conditions and waivers that I'm putting forth. So, a motion to approve the definitive subdivision plan and the waivers. Correct. Requested. Is there a second? 
Second. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Next, we have the site plan reviewers. Mess me up, staple it back. Are we all doing this, George? Is that where you passed it down? Yep. So, Chairman, I'd make a motion that we approve the site plan review. Um, again, plans dated and revised June 22nd, um, listing the following facts as listed, the conditions as listed, and I believe that Mr. Fitzgerald could add the one condition for his lighting concern if he, would, if he wouldn't mind adding to my motion for approval with conditions. Okay, so as, as long as Mr. Raleigh's can accept what they propose, I'm fine with that. All right. So then my uh, motion for approval would be that uh, the comment that Mr. Raleigh had initially with the applicant for the lighting at the site entrance would be adhered to. So a motion's been made okay. and seconded. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Uh, no, not, he's, he's exempt. I mean, he's, he actually can on site plan, not on definitive. That's the definitive. He won't be a full member till July 1. This one too? You want a lot. Need your signature a lot of times. You have four on there? Yeah, you have four, yeah. Very good. Did I call for vote? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> All in favor? I'll put that in the night. The sign. What? Put this into the signed folder. Ah, this one? Yeah. Don't want me to walk out with it. Very good. Okay, well, thank you very much. We appreciate the. Uh, thank you all. Time thank you. The board put in on the project. There's some, uh, some additional. Next up is the continued public hearing for site plan review and definitive subdivision for Bay Point Country Club at all. <laughs> and as I stated earlier, they have requested a continuance due to the uh, absence of the mediator, the inability for him to be here tonight. And their suggested date is July 24. July 24. Good, you're not going to make me try to read that. I will. I will not be. I think I fly back on the 24th. I'm not sure I'll be here. So, I mean, I'll try, but I, I doubt it. Yeah, I'm so be tired. Yeah. Well, it's a San Diego flight, so I'm supposed to get in around four or five o'clock at Logan. So. A perfect world, I could make it right here by seven, but I doubt it. So. Well, George, what are, what are we going to do for uh, votes in this? We have a, a drastic change in the board. Well, 
Mike, Mike, you're still with us, right? On this. Emmanuel, you're, he's a new member. He'll be. Well, we haven't taken any testimony. Yeah, exactly. Yet. It's a new application, correct? Right. Brand new submission. Mike, are you staying or just for this for that hearing and then I'm just trying to stay long enough to get it done. Get no, I, well that's I I thought that's what you were doing, but the only I wasn't thing sure. That happens if my house sells between now and then. Live with me if you want. Well you got three or four houses anyway, don't you? Say it again? You've got three or four houses anyway, don't you? All in Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, and the Proposed deadline for the decision is August 14th. Yeah, I, I, Mr. Chairman, I take exception to that. I, I, I really have a problem with this. Because um, the mediator didn't show up doesn't mean that they can't present their case. In my personal opinion, it's one person's opinion. But anyway, so we, so we go ahead and we extend this until July 24th is their request. If, if the board so desires, I myself won't be here that particular night. Um, but you're talking July 24th, and they're giving you until August what to 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 make your decision? Is that 14th not, is does it does it not sound ludicrous, or is it just me? Is it just my personal opinion? Uh, no, I think we've all voiced that same opinion oh. over the past okay, continuances. Um, the issue is if if we're not completed and we need more time, the applicant will need to offer that. If not, we'll be forced to vote, and that probably wouldn't bode well for the applicant, correct? Uh, correct. I think probably. Well, I think they, in their best interest, they would want to cooperate. And in what's what's well, the date of the first hearing in August? I do have a question, Mr. Chairman. Where, where this got postponed because the moderator couldn't make it? Am I? To assume Media. that the town council will be at every one of these meetings now? Uh, I don't know if he's. Town council was was uh, not going to be at this at this hearing tonight. Right. But they will be from now on. I think it's appropriate if we have to wait for the moderator, the uh, mediator. mediator, to attend that we request town council to be here as well evidently it's important to have the attorneys in the room well is it is it uh, mr chairman were you aware that the mediator was going to be attending the hearing anyway uh there was one previous continuance that was requested when the mediator couldn't attend so i assumed he was coming uh, I did voice my opinion that I didn't see why it was necessary for him to be here for a presentation, but uh, it was very strongly recommended that we continue. Who, who, uh, the, who the answer to the first, uh, first meeting in August is August 14th. Yeah, so, so, so in, in essence, I guess uh, just, just following through with my, with my train of thought, Mr. Chairman, is if the hearing is July 24th, the next hearing is the night you're supposed to render your decision. It's absolutely ludicrous, but that's my two cents. Thank you for listening. Mr. Buckman, do you have a... I would, I would rather have uh, additional time for the uh, decision. So should we request that now before we put them on our agenda? To ask for the extension of time. You want to continue the uh, public hearing to the 24th, I think that makes sense. But uh, request that the, the decision. I, I think it's a that's a discussion we best have when everybody's here, I guess, as far as the deadline goes. But if that discussion doesn't go well, we've opened the public hearing, then we're on the clock. I prefer not to do that with them anymore. Well, you can, as, as, you, as you mentioned before, you can uh, vote down the application but based on the lack of. That's not what we want to do. We want to 
put together a good project and approve it and get it going. Right. So you, in a spirit of cooperation, accept the uh, the extension of time to the 24th uh, and the continued hearing, but leave open the uh, the decision on the deadline for the. I'm not in favor of that. So I'd rather to get it resolved now. So one-sided relationship. Mr. Cronin can't be here that night. Maybe prudent to uh, postpone it another month. Mr. Cronin can review the uh, the minutes of the meeting, the video, to catch himself up on what went on in that meeting and, and be an eligible voting member. Yeah, that, that can be done. And, and well, that, given the timeline they've given, uh, given us, I mean, you know, it can't be done because <laughs> to hit the 14th, we'd have to vote on the 26th. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, and that's why I'm saying I, I it, just my my opinion, Mr. Chairman, I, I can't uh, I can't vote to extend it till July 24th, knowing that they want a decision that, that their request has a date of August 14th. I, I with a clear conscience, I can't be part of that motion that's you're putting a gun to your head I, I, I kind of sympathize with mr. Cronin because with the uh, track record of the applicant ev every time we tried to work with them they turned around and put the gun to our head and I don't you know I got a funny taste in my mouth Maybe we should request mr. Serkey talk to his client and give us an open extension or at least an extension in accordance with state law, which would be the 90 days. From the opening of the hearing. From the close of the hearing. I'm sorry, from the close of the hearing. So there you go, because how, who here could tell you how many nights this hearing may go? You may get an audience full of people again. You may get nobody, so. You might uh, not get a complete submission. Right now, I would look for a motion to continue to June Yes. July. July. 24th. 24th. So you're putting a gun to my head now. I would, I would not vote appro approval of that until we get something in writing from Mr. Serkey. Well, I'm ask, what I'm asking is a, is a motion just to continue to the 24th. Nothing, nothing further. I think that's about all we can do. Procedurally, you have to continue the hearing. Yeah. To some date certain. And the one date you have that's that's available by the letter from Rich Serkey is when July twenty four. When we tell them that we probably won't have a full board that night, they'll probably look to continue again. Well, well, again, I'll, I'll I'll double check, Mr. Chairman, what it is, but I'm almost positive it was like a five p.m. arrival at Logan. So I I couldn't promise that you. Did you see me? Send a chopper to pick you up and chop you down at their expense? I came in from Logan this afternoon, two hours and 45 minutes. There you go. <laughs> so it was afternoon. That was after you got your luggage. Which Uber driver did no, you I, use? No, I dropped my daughter off, but um, it was horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Always is. I try to get to Green. It's, Look, it's half hour from so the parking lot at the airport to get to the tunnel. Half yeah. hour. But to, just to. to Give an explanation of what's going on. I'm not directly involved, but what I is, understand was the mediator was supposed to come to this, had planned to come to the meeting this time around. He unfortunately, at least for us, uh, is uh, up for town council, I think, in Holliston. They called a meeting for him for, for today. He, he had planned to be here so he could have the irregular hearing. He couldn't make it, so he asked if they could, basically the next meeting he would be available. And it ended up that they pushed it back to the 24th. Uh, Bay Point did not ask for this extension, just so everybody understands. This was asked for through the town. And the town decided through town council as well, we should postpone it. It wasn't Bay Point, so just so you understand that. And the bottom line to this is that they pushed the date back. Remember the, the, the drop dead date, was, I think, was July 31st before? <laughs> well, they pushed the hearing back instead of two weeks, they pushed it back four weeks. They only pushed the final date back two weeks it should have been four weeks also right so the final date should be the end of august 
Well, I so that's see, what I would that's what I would request from. Well, I I, I can I can appreciate your 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 explanation and your your theory of the final date should be. I disagree wholeheartedly. There's there's a there's a clause in the in the in the uh, from the state. It's 90 days. So I understand, John. I'm just telling you what we well, had for dates and the reason why this got postponed. Yeah, I there's, I, a, two, there's a two week difference. Yes, sir. Where it should be. Yes, sir. And and. And those, and that two-week difference is per the applicant's wish. It just, yes, it, is. it, it just doesn't seem to lawyer. work that way, in my opinion. We have rules, and, and we should follow them. You know, this isn't also a case that the town, um, the, the, t to me, in my personal opinion, I cannot speak for the board, but this applicant was given both approvals and decided to go the route of appealing them because he was unhappy with some conditions. So in my personal opinion, this is a self-inflicted wound. He, he could have been building already, but he decided to fight the conditions and, 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 and take out his unhappiness and change his plan and, and change when he was going to do certain things. God bless him. It's a free country. But I'm not having a gun put to my head, whether it's to, two weeks or four weeks. You don't have to accept the date at the end there. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yes. I don't. I, I, no, that's fine. Yeah, oh, no, cool. All right, good. I'm on the that's same page with you. That, that's a letter that came from the, the lawyer. Okay. Setting those dates. Yeah. This board doesn't hasn't accepted yet. Either has the town. Okay. So that's all. That's on your end. But I'm just explaining what really happened. So gotcha. Stay on the stand. Appreciate. Thank you. Well, Mr. Chairman, with that all said, I would make a motion that the Bay Point Country Club hearing be uh, continued until July 24th, um, with no other further dates involved in that motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Discussion. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Very good. And I'll pass that on to the uh, to Attorney Rich Serkey about the deadline for the decision. It, 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 there is. I, Again, for, dis for discussion, now that it's over, there is really no discussion on, on the date for, for the approval. That's, that's their asking for a date. There is no date for approval. We, I, I honestly think that this board should even stop saying that, that, that when we, we ask for continuance to such and such a date and a decision on such and such a date, that, that's them asking for a decision on a certain date, that we don't adhere to that. We, I think we should stop saying it as a board. I'm sorry, guys, but that's my opinion. That's why I simply asked for continuance. That's why I gave it to you, because you asked nicely. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and that is on site special permit, site plan review, and definitive subdivision. All in one night. Next, we have the bond for American assisted living. You got a check? Yeah, we did get a check. Okay. Um, this is with respect to the All American assisted living. Um, I took a, another look at the project last week, and with the exception of two items, uh, all of the things that were on the checklist before that was subject to that letter of credit. Well, the bond that they issued has been, they've been taken care of. Uh, there's one erosion issue in the infiltration area. Um, then the drainage swale that they constructed still needs some, needs some loam and seed. Uh, both uh, Phil and I agreed to uh, a cost on that of $5,000 and 50% on top is 2,500. So they should be posting a check for $7,500. And we received a check for $7,500 today. So if you accept that and say uh, put 60 days time limit on it, that should give plenty of time to get both those items taken care of and then get the money released. Mr. Buckman, is there any verbiage in reference to an applicant that doesn't adhere to their approval by letting the bond lapse? Is there any statutes or? No, what we can do is we can call the bond if they let it lapse. But they did let it lapse. But they were cooperative and they were trying to, to uh, modify the bond and, and, and repair the work that was, was noted. 
Yeah, it's not like some of the developers here in town that let it go and do what they want. So, you know. It's Catch me if you can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> one, one of the things if, um, if the board sees this in the future would be to um, make sure the language gets put in that document that says that it's automatically extended. Well, uh, going back, it's Charlie. It's simply expired like, when, like when, what was put when in We now. ran into bond problems before with them guys, you know, catch me if you can type. We had it, we had verbiage put in there, the language that when a bond was written, it was written in the town of Wayham's name also, and we were notified when the bond was due to be renewed or something happened. Because of that reason, people, you know, get a bond in the post, box, post office box in Nevada. And uh, we tried uh, the, pulling a couple the language, The language in this particular one was that you were supposed to notify them prior to the expiration of it if the work hadn't no, been done. No, well, no. that's what was in the bond. Right, the, the, the verbiage was poor. Instead of making some other there. kind yeah. of language next but, but we went through that exercise before, so that wouldn't happen. And, and like I said, I was kind of, kind of puzzled how, how we got to the, where we are. Yeah. The town was never notified or whatever. It was almost like being a third party. To, well, to actually, it. we were notified by Allen and Major, the, uh, the, the consultants. Because they had identified it as an issue coming up. We had a meeting with them and we <clears throat> told them to renew their bond, yet they deliberately did not renew the bond and now the town is accepting it. So what's the next rule of regulation and approval that can be broken? All of them? They were being, they were being cooperative and in identifying the issues of agreeing to extend a bond of a reduced amount that fit with what was left over in the construction. Are we going to be more diligent on the language when somebody puts a bond on us? Or are we going to review it with a fine tooth comb? Because that, that was changed for that reason, so that wouldn't happen. Because you ran through that, going back probably 10, 15 years ago, Charlie. I've been running a long time, Ken. My memory's not gone totally. Idea. And we had, we had more guys run out on us. Uh, I can say a lot of different names, but that's not important. But Hey, I'm, I'm, deal I'm, I'm still dealing with happen? some of those. When it came to our attention, it was not time to notify them in writing. We could only do it by email. Um, so we should set up some sort of a Yeah, but that, 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 that should be a known right up front. That's, that's nothing that yeah, should we be got, done after We've got to come up with some sort of a check so there's, don't get in that situation. Yeah, it's got to be something. Uh, I mean, you've got an occupancy permit down there and you've got work to be done. Thank God it's only a few items. Uh, I've seen them before with you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of work and they're all living in it. Well, we, we, we give occupancy permits people on a temporary OP and they still didn't get done yeah, 10 years later. Well, that's, that so, was... Well, we got to get a better been, wording. Shouldn't have been a permanent CO issued with a site plan hanging. Yeah. But we got all new people, we got to get it all So what, so what do we need together. For, what do we need for this evening? Are we, you, you're trying to get... A uh, motion to accept the bond in amount of $7,500. Uh, work to be complete by. Uh, what are we doing? Are we doing any plantings or? No. Well, some grass. Woman seed. You're going to hydro seed it or you're going to? They, they'll hydro seed it. So we just have to get it to grow through the summer. Yeah. If they water it, it'll come up. But I would suggest. 60 days, um, September 1st, or something like that. Uh, that's more than adequate time. You just got to set a date, that's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, July and August are tough months to get, right. especially in a swale. You get one. Uh, first meeting in September is the 11th. You want to review it at that point? We had a heavy rain. I think it's September 15th. That'll carry you beyond the first meeting in, in September. Go on. Okay. So you'll have time to vote. I'd make that motion that we accept the, the bond check of the 7,500 and we uh, give them until September 15th to adhere to the two conditions that Charlie's labeled. You might want to also note that uh, it's within your statutory power that if they don't perform within that time, that you can 
cash that money and have the work done. Well, we're cashing it anyway. <laughs> we'll party in the sweat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We want it small and like bills. We'll go plant the grass ourselves. <laughs> said, yeah. <laughs> Second. Thank you. Before you vote, can I have a clarification? I believe we asked Mr. Buckland to find out whether or not the Board of Selectmen has to approve that as they do with certain security surety bonds, et cetera. I think you were going to take this care is of that. A, this is a cash bond. I don't think they have any input on that. I believe that. Ken was going to check with Town Council at the last meeting we discussed this. Did you? Didn't have it as a cash bond at that time. All right. I think it, whether it's a cash bond or what, no matter what it is, we're talking about the original bond, and I believe the Board of Selectmen on certain things does have, does, is required to actually release it, to, to allow it. That's why I asked the question before. It's expired. There's nothing to release. Well, yeah, it's, 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 I, I think you're right, Alan. It, just from memory of a couple of those things that I dealt with in the past, I, I think you're right. But if you would, please ask the question. But confirm with town council. Thank you. Does that cost us anything? <laughs> no, no, it Se doesn't. Seventy-five hundred. How's the retainer? All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Aye. <laughs> yeah. Don't hit me that way. Three one zero. Ah, uh, what else we got here? Hey Phil. He can't. Staff report? Is there a staff report? No, no staff report this time. Entertain a motion to adjourn? I would. I'll second that motion, Mike. Would you like to discuss it? Yeah, let's Here, go into hearing the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Well, we'll call it 8 30.